started her career in Rex in 1998, managing the Literary Education Recruitment Office, progressing to overseeing the Business Development Department of the Publishing Group. With her new role as of November 2019, Danda will represent Rex Group of Companies to ex its external clientele. Dr. Maria Virginia Bautista is the Vice President of Vicarish Publishing and Trading Incorporated Philippines. She also serves as an internal linkage in all dealings of Vicarish Publications. Further, she is the President of Sanjay Kim Booker Incorporated, the digital arm of Vicarish Publication and the author of the Dr. Duno Interaction in Interactive Educational Systems. Mr. J M Ms. Alma Dayag, on the other hand, served St. Paul College Pasig in various capacities as a classroom teacher, subject coordinator, grade level team leader, and assistant principal for academics. She is also a PASCO accreditor. She is currently a member of the team of CPD providers for educators from the Phoenix Educational Foundation. Last but not the least, Mr. John Jack Wigley, our session's moderator, is the author of six books. He has also co-authored a number of textbooks in literature and creative writing. Presently, he is the chair of the Department of Literature, University of Santo Tomas, a literature professor at the Faculty of Arts and Letters, a resident fellow of the Center for Creative Writing and Literary Studies, and a research fellow of the Research Cluster on Culture, Arts, and Humanities. Let's all give them a warm welcome. Uh, magandang hapon po. Uh, welcome to the session 12 of the Book Industry Summit 2019. And uh, the publication and the production of textbooks has both been a welcome opportunity and a challenge today. The maintenance of bringing quality to these published textbooks in spite and despite the growing challenges of the times uh, poses uh, myriad opportunities for major publishing houses and bookshops. We shall be uh, witnesses today, this afternoon, to the sharing of these uh, best practices and challenges in contemporizing uh, textbook content. Now, this session is titled Maintaining Quality of Textbooks, and we are fortunate uh, to have with us an interesting lineup of discussants who will share their best practices as they were introduced to you um, earlier on. So we'll try to follow the, the procedure. Um, first, it would be um, uh, Mam. Danda Crimel de Buhain of Rex Bookstore, followed by Dr. Maria Virginia Bautista of Vicarish Publication and Trading. And finally, we'll have Ms. Alma Dayag of the Phoenix Publishing House Incorporated. So we'd like to call on um, Ms. Danda Buhain. And let's give them a round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Danda Crimelda. I am the Chief External Affairs Officer of the Rex Group, and I'm here to present to you some of the things that, um, you know, some of the experiences, the sharing, the ideas that I have on how to maintain quality textbooks. What is a textbook? <clears throat> a textbook can be conceived as a working tool, either for the teacher or for the pupil. Textbook as a tool for communication, language used, quantity and level of information, text illustrations, and links between the two, latter two elements. Textbooks are an instructional aid in the teaching learning process and must correspond to curricula so far as objectives, content, and methodology of instruction of each subjects are concerned. So today, the medium of textbooks are as follows. It can be in print, through workbooks, work text, modules, or it can also be in digital format. So we have PDF formats, ebook, ebook one, ebook two, flip books. So looking at this um, um, slide, who are the primary users of textbook? As you can see, it's actually everyone. Everyone, including those unborn learners inside the womb of a mother. 
it's actually from birth to death or prior to birth. And you would, and when you think about it, everyone in this um in this world are learners. Not only those people who are inside schools and institutions are textbooks users. Everyone can be, no matter what gender, no matter what stature in life you have, everyone is a learner. As a matter of fact, even animals can be learners because I remember some people, those organizations, they read books to dogs. And the dogs, since they have emotions as well, there's a tendency for these people, to, for, the, for, the, for the pets to be like, you know, to be tamed. So the primary users of textbooks now are people from zero to 100, animals as well, and maybe any living organism that can actually respond to learning and information. Now the question is, why there is a need to maintain good textbooks? Probably next to the teacher or the facilitator himself, textbooks probably exerts greater influence than any other factor upon the curriculum. Textbooks have been credited for significant improvements in curriculum and blamed for major shortcomings. Textbook plays an important role in supporting learning and teaching. So facilitators and the students without textbooks, learning and teaching, um, um, interaction will never happen. Textbook serves also as a guide that helps learners, reader, organize their learning. Textbook is also one of the most important sources of contact a learner with, a learner can have with the content and the language. What are the dysfunctions and challenges in maintaining quality of textbooks? If you don't have, if you don't have or you lack clear value proposition, it is very difficult for a writer content developers, content creators, or even publishers to develop a textbook. You have to be able to somehow know who your target users are, target readers are. You have to be able to understand the learning profile or the reader's profile so that as an author, or as a publisher, or as anyone involved in textbook development, you would be able to be more responsive when you put together your manuscripts. Who is this textbook for? How and where it will be used? Is it going to be a primary resource? Or is it going to be a supplementary resource? Or is it going to be a complementary resource? That, I think, is very, very important for people in, um, whose practices in textbook development to actually understand. So one, another dysfunction is there is no enough market research or ethnography behavior. Sometimes, I mean, admittedly, probably, publishers or writers would always just have some data, minimum data of what kind of books do you think would be saleable. But that's, 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 that's not enough. I think we have to go deeper into really understanding the behavior of the generation today, the behavior of people today. I mean, we cannot um, say that the generation of before in terms of readership would be similar to the learners of today. And the behavior, all aspects of it, has to be taken into consideration if you really want your textbook materials to, be mean, to, be, to resonate in those people that you are targeting for. Um, of course, another dysfunction is a biased point of view. You cannot have a biased point of view. It's important that you gather as many because one opinion of the other cannot be the opinion. Culturally, it's also different. It is very important that you are able to gather as many information so that you are also responsive to the different segmentations of this society. Another dysfunction in maintaining or a challenge in maintaining quality textbook if there are no evidence-based research or a research that is not structurally put together. It really is very important that writing can be a talent, but it important if you really want to inject as well your entrepreneurship or your business acumen, 
if you're intentioned for your books to sell, it is really important that you also learn and scan the environment and the market. So that, um, like what I said earlier, it's not enough that you have put together something. The real success of any textbook developer is that a lot of people have learned from you, a lot of people have bought your book, and a lot, a lot of people have been influenced positively by the manuscript or by the textbook that you have written. And another thing probably that, um, that causes um, dysfunctions in, in the maintenance of textbook is that sometimes people tend to be very complacent. It's actually relative to what the other um, uh, um, factors that I said earlier. We can't be complacent. This is an iterative profession. We have to continue to do and, re and test and um, gather feedbacks on how still we can best improve our content and our textbooks. So to, to shed light on some some principles that I think will help everyone, whether you are a self-publisher or you are an author who would want to be part of, the, of a, publish, a publication group. It is important that you are guided by more or less some principles in maintaining a good textbook. It's important that you look at the content, the learning and teaching, the structure and the instructional design. You look at the language used. You look at the um, technical function requirements, the pedagogical use, most especially if you are going to be developing ebooks. And then, of course, the layout of it. Whether it's printed or digital, the layout really matters. In or the science and art of doing it would actually improve the level of comprehension of anybody reading your textbooks. So for content, these are the things that we have to look into. Alignment to the curriculum or alignment to the subject matter or discipline. If there are any government regulatories that needs to be aligned, I think it's important because they are very, once it's mandated by the government, it really is a must that you have to go get into them. But if there are disciplines that don't really require at least, at least an evidence-based research to ensure that people would believe all the things that you're, you have written there for credibility purposes. Sufficient and enough to address the expressed learning targets. It should be correct, precise, and information should be accurate and relevant. There should be a balance between depth and breadth. A balance as well of multiple per perspectives. Extent is Extent difficulty is aligned just right to the level of the intended reader, no bias in the content, and there is consideration in the learner's existing and prior knowledge. I guess this is really important that we look into when developing content because so that more or less a reader must be able to imagine things prior so that when, she, when he starts reading your material, you already, the reader already has a relationship with the book being bought. And if that's the, the I mean, I guess that's the, re, the, re, the, the, the technique that everyone has to be thinking. You have to be friends with your textbooks. Because if you're not friends with your textbooks, I don't think a relationship will ever, it will not be successful for you both if you are not happy with the textbook that you're reading. For the learning and teaching, here are the things that, you know, uh, might guide us. Engagement of students to various learning activities to help students learn and learn how to learn. Balanced treatment of cognitive skills. Of course, it's important that we observe higher order thinking skills. It's encouraged and promoted to ensure analysis, evaluation, and judgment. 21st century skills development should be developed. Learners are required to experience the process of learning, research, searching from various multiple sources. Designed activities to facilitate students to actively integrate, practice, and apply new knowledge. In a book, it is important that you may have a book, but the instruction or the way it was designed should actually help 
our reader to be able to somehow lead him to researching more. Because we don't want that complacency among readers that it's, and it's very impossible to come up with a complete book. That's really impossible. But it really is important that your book is enough. But your book has, is designed in order for that reader to look for other books and learn more information. So that when she finishes that module or subject area, his mind, his total being is um, enriched with so many information. And, you know, and as a teacher, you're assured that, you know, this person will be able to face the world tomorrow because of his ability to to learn, relearn, um, extend the way he uses all these textbooks. It should be interesting. It should have clear motivation. And a range of various and meaningful activities are appropriate to the level of learners and align with instructional strategies and learning objectives. Now we go to the third, structure and design. A, a good textbook should be structured appropriately. Organization of the content is provided to facilitate meaningful learning. Content is written appropriately and arranged logically. Important information and concepts are highlighted and given emphasis. You should be able to provide table of contents, unit headers, chapters, titles, and introduction, and the outline of each chapter, unit, or lesson that will serve as introductory section. There has to be a link between that other chapter to the next. Why is this placed here prior to this? Why is this placed after this? Why is it spirally repeated again? So those things are very, very important when you are designing. Because at the end of the day, when you design something, it, there has to be an objective set. I mean, if the objective is not met after reading that chapter, I mean, that's, that's really sad. I don't, think it, I don't think your book will ever have some place in the sun if it's written or structured in that way. The language. It should be accurate and precise. Making use of familiar, interesting language to motivate learning and understanding. Words used must connect to the student's prior and existing knowledge. You, as much as possible, use examples that kids can relate to. Making use of reading, writing, the macro skills, listening, speaking, as tools to discover, clarify, and extend meaning for constructing further knowledge of given topics or subjects. The level of words should be commensurate or aligned at par to the ability of the learner. It's okay to introduce Words that like are highfalutin, but make it ensure that there is a, a glossary at the back a bibli that you can actually guide them. It's how you design it, but it is very important that, that you observe that properly if you're going to get if you're gonna get yourself into textbook writing. For textbook layout, we have to be logical and consistent, well organized with appropriate use of space and margin for ease of reading. Of course. We have to always take into consideration the nature of the subject. You cannot have a layout of a math book wherein there's no enough space for people to solve. I mean, it really is the purpose really of being able to see how they were able to solve it. And the margins should also be observed because sometimes it strains the eye and it's bad for the kids, it's bad for the eyes. And after a few pages, you lose the child because, it, I mean, he is already fatigued by reading a, a textbook that is too cluttered, too wordy, and the like. Photographs and illustrations must be ac accurate to facilitate and stimulate learning. Very important, most especially if you're talking about Bayon Volcano. It would be, it's very, very important that you just, you just don't draw it. There has to be some level of imagination. Oh, this is what my young volcano looks like. Oh, there's a Kagsawa ruins there. Oh, this is how Taal volcano looks like. Or this is the picture of Melchor Akin. Those things. It's okay to have um, illustrations drawn if it's not really factual. But 
as much as possible if we if we are because it's a powerful content even without words around those illustrations the picture will speak for itself the font use must be consistent all throughout the textbook but of course giving emphasis to um, words or to some important um, headers for emphasis and retention pedagogical use of features interactive activities multimedia must be accurate the goal is to enhance the effectiveness of learning, teaching, and assessment features. Same as printed, the sequencing of the multimedia content, content, as well as the activities, the interactive activities must be able to journey towards the right, just like books, there's a learning objective there. The text, the e-books should be able to do that as well. Technical and functional requirements must be compatible with the multitude of computing devices. Rights interface and features for navigation and search. Table of contents and links. Hyperlinks must be valid and clean of any copyright issues. Consistent use of font types. Very important. I just want to give emphasis to this because for sometimes we forget to really look at the copyright laws. We just have to ensure that all these are within our means because sayang ang effort sayang sinulat nyo kung lahat ng pala ay lifted at magkaka problema kayo later on content is fit in one page for easy reading no need for installation of extra plugins is very critical if you are be if you will be using ebooks e as much as possible make it easy for the reader or else you will lose them you will lose their interest Okay, and lastly, for the conclusion, providing knowledge alone is not enough. We have to provide a learner and equip them with a multitude of repertoire for acquiring and building up the knowledge and skills that they need. And textbook plays an important role in supporting this. Textbooks will equip them on how to make use of different ways of learning, and then through textbooks, learners will have opportunities to learn a multitude of knowledge and diverse skills that will help them face the world tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is this a pointer? Is this a pointer? Or you will be helping me? Good afternoon, everyone. So I will be introducing again myself. You can call me Mary V or uh, Virginia for short. Ah, malong pala yon, sorry. <laughs> G or Mary V. So with this, I will be representing Vikers Publications. Um, so what I'll be speaking about, I'll be attacking on a different um, discussion, uh, anchoring on the government side. So good afternoon again to everyone. Uh, maintaining the quality of textbooks has become one of the key challenges of every publishing businesses. We need to ensure that the quality or relevance of educational materials we publish along with the quality is that we, we need to keep track of the latest curriculum because every now and then we, we know all of it. We, all of us know that uh, each and um, every year or they don't just um, uh, inform us. We keep on changing and changing curriculum even if uh, there is a prescribed K-12 um, curriculum. So uh, we need to keep track of the curriculum and its prescribed competencies, making it relevant and user-friendly to the teachers and to the learners as well. Next slide, please. Uh, Filipinos have a deep regard to for, and to for education. It has been strongly viewed as a pillar of national development and a primary venue for social and economic mobility. So as quoted from Chancellor Tan of UP De Le Man, we demand good textbooks. So 
Next slide. Um, education reform in the Philippines aims for better quality and more access because here in the Philippines, one of our uh, concern and challenge is that we are geographically distributed. We are archipelagically distributed. So the Philippines is a vibrant and diverse education system with the government through the Department of Education assisted the private sector providing a wide range of education from early years up to college and the university across the upper archipelago. So in 2015, we have only about 14.9 children enrolled at primary school and 6.1 million at secondary level. Next slide. So Secretary Briones, Department of Education in 2019 welcomed almost 27, nag -doble na po siya, 27.2 million learners from all over the country. On quality education, DepEd is increasing its effort to deliver quality, accessible, relevant, liberating basic education given the continuous increase in student population and challenges the department has to face. So she said, as we pivot to, from access to quality, we are continuously reviewing our curriculum and developing learning resources, including our teachers, through transformation of our National Educators Academy of the Philippines. So today's system has been shaped by the Philippines' colonial and post-war history from not being included in the studies of under the Philippine rule, a Spanish rule, to the ill-prepared expansion of free primary education during the American occupancy, it was not until the 19th century that when Philippines were able to attend universities that had been established two centuries earlier. So in 2005, the government promised under the Basic Education Reform Agenda to remove all, all the hurd hurdles limiting access to and from uh, delivery of basic education, whether regulatory, structural, financial, or institutional. The f policy involved the five key trusts, school-based management, development of teacher education, national learning strategies, quality assurance and accountability, and changes of administration of DepEd using the latest technology to ensure more effective use of resources, whether staff or funds. So in 2015, uh, we started the Education for All. This ensures that all Filipinos were able to achieve the, what UNESCO calls functional literacy. So this is the ability to read, write, and do calculations at the level sufficient for the country in which a particular person lives. Further supporting the K-12 program, the, go the government set four key objectives for the, uh, the Education for All initiatives. Uh, these are providing education options for all out-of-school adults and young people, eliminating dropouts, and repetition during the first three years of school. Encouraging completion of a full cycle of basic schooling to a satisfactory level at every grade level by Filipino children and committing to the attainment of basic education competencies for everyone. So the shift uh, began under President Duterte's predecessor, former President um, Aquino, who approached education as an investment in Filipinos and offered a 10-point plan in improving education as part of election campaign. So the plan is to expand government assistance to students and teachers in private education, supporting as many as um, 1 million students at private schools through the education service contracting scheme. So three years since then, there is the Ex Enhanced uh, Basic Education Act, known as the K-12 law that was signed. And this uh, extends compulsory schooling from grades, um, uh, including grades 11 to 12. Adding two more years to secondary school makes secondary education compulsory. Prior to its implementation, the Philippines was the only um, country in Asia and the only one uh, in the view of the world to have a basic education system of just 10 years. So in 2016, one point 
5 million Filipino children attended 11th grade with senior school students choosing between the four tracks uh, true system, academic, technical, vocational, sports, and arts. So, um, during the 43rd cabinet meeting at the Malacanang Palace, President Duterte is skeptically, uh, skeptical about the program. Uh, before he was elected, changed his mind in 2016 after the, delega uh, after the delegation from DEP had told him that the, the change was necessary as uh, Filipino students were falling behind the neighbors. So there should be uh, the proposal um, or increased spending on basic education, including expansion of us or our alternative learning system. Um, insist on the development of Philippines human capital as a priority of his administration. Uh, with that, Secretary Briones' administration's policy intends to ensure that the country provides quality education that is accessible and relevant to the needs of the nation. So during this 43rd cabinet meeting, the proposals approved um, where the improvement of curriculum for students who want to pursue education, nararamdaman na ba natin yun ngayon? Creation of more plantilla, so naririnig na natin sa news yan, for, uh, for teachers, crafting of a communication plan on education, harnessing the use of technology meant to educate uh, more students, educators, and teachers. So, um, Consider the seen challenges in the education sector as according to um, Chancellor Tan of UP Diliman, there is a demand for textbook that caters to the following needs. So um, uh, what are th uh, this, uh, these four general um, bullets here um, is one of the challenges, uh, among the challenges uh, we are uh, looking into, like, we need enough competent textbook teachers for reason that, first, potentially, good textbook writers are too busy teaching and doing research. I myself is also um, um, experiencing this because I am always looking into universities, colleges, schools for good writers and authors. It's very difficult to persuade them to um, to write books because they are focused on uh, teaching and doing their research because sabi nila, magkatagalog na ako, sabi nila, mas may pera daw doon. Tapos pag sa government ka naman kumuha ng writers, sasabihin nila ay maliit lang ang point system uh, doon sa kanilang annual um, merong evaluation, performance evaluation. So, and as well as the monetary compensation is, of course, much higher in, uh, in teaching and in doing research. So, secondly, textbook writing is viewed with condensation in the academe, knowing what to use and how to present materials in such a way that facilitates both learning and teaching is uh, both an art and science. So, next is localization. Using local examples makes uh, learning more relevant. Like, uh, uh, kanina nga po nag-discuss kami ni uh, Sir John, sabi niya ay uh, ngayon ay uh, kaya masyado tayo naka-anchor sa English. Uh, sabi ko kanina, can I speak Filipino? Because all of us here are Filipinos. Wala namang, wala naman ditong ano-ano. Uh, siguro magi English pa ako kasi USRN ako. Pero wala naman dito ano, wala naman dito Americano. We are always used to speaking in English because that is the formal way of presenting education. But we don't know in the use of the mother tongue, it is also important that we know how to speak proper Filipino language. Dahil um, ngayon, mahirap mag-compose ng Filipino. Why? Because kasalanan to ng mga teacher natin. Uh, dahil tayo noon ay mahilig sa uh, English. Yun ang pamantayan. Kailangan proper ang grammar, proper ang language. We cannot able to ex uh, we we are not able to express ourselves because we are used to uh, kailangan mukha kang matalino kapag ikaw ay nagsasalita ng English. Tama po ba ako? So, uh, sabi dito ay 
Uh, like for math, for example, textbooks have elaborate exercise about gallons and liters, pounds and kilograms, and yon English and American um, measurements, right? So, but nothing about local measurements that are still important in daily lives. Like, say, do you know gantas? Ganta? Uh, in measuring bigas? And cabans for rice? So, walang masyadong ganon. Another example would be introducing concepts on distance using places. Like, for foreign destinations are fine as well. Alam natin yung uh, kilometers, miles, siguro hindi man tayo gawagaan dito sa Amerika lang yon. Um, Yung halimbawa raw ay yung nanay ay nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa, paano ipapaliwanag? How will you be able to explain to the, to the child na how distance is your mother, like a nurse mother working in Dubai? How far is your mom from you? And if you will be traveling from here to your mom, uh, what is the distance? So dapat sa math, tinuturo din siya para yung bata may appreciation. So, meron ba tayo nakikita sa libro? Mukha akong, nung, tum, nung, I am looking into the editorial department of Vicarage Publications, wala akong nakitang ganon. It is only now that we are injecting the social social development content and as well as the, um, yung localization. Um, sabi pa nga, may nag, nagbanggit pa sa akin na isang, um, isang taga, isang teacher na wala daw siyang nakita na Puro na lamang daw Mount Everest ang nakalagay. At, at tignan mo, ang map mayon ay kung saan saan napupunta geographically. Tama po ba ako doon? Oo. So, uh, uh, on, kung saan saan siya uh, napupunta. So, dapat one can ask what travel time will be on a plane with an average speed of X kilometers per hour. Um, dapat yung bata, alam niya na kung paano niya i-reach yung nanay niya. Example lang yon So, like uh, for number three, yung mother tongue, with the department's education requiring the use of local mother language as medium of instruction from kindergarten to grade three, because in the child's development, ang sabi ay um, uh, the student can be able, the learner can be able to understand fully the learnings if uh, grades 1 to 3, uh, mother tongue ang gagamitin. How about for the higher level? So, uh, one of the challenges is, um, is that how are we going to integrate not only grades 1 to 3 mother tongue? Hindi naman po lahat ay magaling magtagalog, magaling mag-ingles. So, dapat as early as that, uh, hindi lang sa, sa grade 3, grade 1, grade kinder to grade 3, yung first set na yon. So, dapat mas mataas pa. So, it would depend. Um, marami ako nakakausap na I am talking to different LGUs. Um, they are always looking into the mother tongue aspect of the book, not only to, kasi di ba sila yung order, susundin mo yung clients mo. So, tama nga naman, mas na sila ay mas natututo kapag uh, may integration ng mother tongue. Like when you go to Cebu, their appreciation is not, uh, on, uh, not only in English, but their mother tongue, not Filipino, not Tagalog. Pag nagsalita ka ng Tagal, oo, Cebu, Cebu and uh, English ang appreciation nila for learning. So, Cebuano, sorry, Cebuano. Yun. So, um, di ba lahat naman tayo na. And then, as well as blended uh, teaching compatibility. I guess last, um, last September 12, um, in MOA, we have already... Um, discuss about the um, blended learning. So it is very helpful. Uh, five minutes na lang daw ako. <laughs> My God. There are more uh, good textbooks than local content, even more important than um, our pedagogical teaching principles that guide production of instructional materials in general. So our students now have moved, to, have moved into the electronic era but not fearing away from the printed ones, of course. 
um, these areas, um, I'm sorry, please, uh, next slide, please. So these areas um, are what the educational publishers must have at the core of their businesses. So ito kasi yung aming, uh, ito yung aming tinitignan. So ano yun, in reflection to the presentive challenges, these are the service to and for Filipino learners. So um, I myself, when I am um, um, going to in speaking engagement, I always say to uh, to my authors, to the, our writers, that you should always put passion to what you do. Uh, hindi lang siya laging uh, what is theoretically prescribed. Uh, kailangan you have the passion. Uh, being a teacher, being an educator, educator, you should be able to deep um, go further to your students. Kasi ikaw yung nakaka intindi kung saan level matututo yung sujante mo. So you should be able to put passion on that. So yun doon na po siya, papasok doon sa service for the Filipino learners. And as well, as one, um, I, while ago, I was mentioning about uh, putting expert teachers, uh, expert, experts as writer because when you look into, when you are um, looking into writers, um, siyempre mahirap nga yung expert kumuha, kukuha ka na ng, ng writers dyan uh, hindi ganun ang pagkuha ng writer uh, you should be looking into the expert, not only the experts I am looking into is not only uh, you know how to teach, then you can write no, it's not that it's the experience itself yung KSA na yon knowledge, skills, and attitude should be there so, yun yung experts para sa akin. And then, as well, following the curriculum guide. Um, sabi ko nga kanina, uh, we, uh, all of the publishers are, because we are into printed materials, uh, it's very difficult for us to change every now and then. Mabuti't mabuti kung lahat ng publishers ay may digital, uh, digital arm. Madaling mag-edit. Uh, ang ibig ko sabihin, may printed na kayo na binibenta, meron pa kayong uh, digital. How about your printed material? Hindi naman tayo nagpiprint ng kakaunti kasi malulugi naman tayo. Dapat ang print trans natin ay marami. ba? So, isa pa, following the social content guidelines. Because uh, there are nine parameters in the social content guidelines. Number one of which, yung sinabi ko sa inyo, ay... Um, Yung, yung localization, yung nation building, um, observance of um, nutrition. So, lahat yung tinuturo dun sa social content guidelines. I know that each and every publishers know of this. And we must understand that we should integrate the social contents prescribed by DepEd. Kasi pag tayo din naman ay matigas ang ulo, hindi naman din tayo matatnalo sa kanila. Um, we should be uh, going beyond that. Uh -huh. So, what should be, next slide please, ayun na. Uh, what should be your actions? These actions are reflection to the points made by Chancellor Tan, but it is also what we are doing to invite experts of different fields to author and educational learning materials. So, one of which is also that we are researching. I, I guess Danda have mentioned about research. And um, in doing books, um, ako mismo, uh, I do research. Kasi mamaya binabola na lang ako ng writer ko eh. So, I do as well. I also do research. Hindi ko siya pinagkakatiwala basta-basta. Kailangan magre-research ka din. And um, as well as to have a standard that will help measure the quality of learning material and to avoid release of contents with errors which affect the entire industry. So you are attending conferences on prescribed um, content development guidelines formulated by experts of subject areas. So I guess uh, in your own uh, department, you should be able to have your own core group, uh, a team, so, and as well as you should be able to peer review it uh, with other um, outside um, entity. 
and as well as collaborative initiatives between book publishers and the Department of Education. That I appreciate most because uh, pag kayo nagmi-meeting, nag-uusap kayo, hindi lang sa email, nagkakaintindihan kayo. Uh, iba kasi yung ini-email, iba yung kinocommunicate by um, letter lang. Uh, tayo ay nagkaka nagkakaintindihan through series of conferences and um, uh, meetings. So, so in Vicarish Publications, we are committed in the provision of quality educational materials for uh, for the Philippine basic education learners through the courses of actions mentioned, leading towards maintaining the quality of textbook we publish. And in conclusion, uh, make the Philippine Basic Education Learner Center or motivation for your material development. Know what the learners um, of today need and provide them in, in a manner that is appealing to them. Kasi nga, short ng attention sa ng mga bata ngayon. The industry must be one uh, in the implementation and assurance that we, not, we produce not only what we sell, but what we believe that the learners need in order to for them to become effective members of the society, especially having basic education as a learner's foundation in learning through his life. We must give them strong and effective materials as early as they started to go to school. Sabi nga ni Ms. Dana kanina, from birth to death. Tama ba ako? Uh, before, before birth pa ba? Up to uh, death. Nagbabasa, kailangan ng libro. So with that, I leave you an inspiring message from the former UN General, Kofi Atta Annan. Knowledge is power, information is liberating, education is the premise of progress in every society, in every family. Thank you. Magandang hapon. Gising pa ba kayo? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to introduce myself once again. I am Alma Dayag and I am the author and coordinator of Pluma. So I, I don't know if you're familiar with my book, but I am Alma. And um, I want to talk from the perspective of an author, coordinator, and the teacher, okay? I'm happy that Miss Danda started with uh, talking from the uh, perspective of a publisher, si mom na mom about the government. So now I am free to talk from my perspective. So let's start. You know, I want to start with this. It's very important for me to start with our own vision and mission because I should know what I believe in. And if I know that, I should be able to put that in my textbooks. So in Phoenix Publishing House, we believe that we are patriots in promoting Filipino values and traits. Highlighted Filipino values and traits. And these are definitely seen in our textbooks. What else? We are pioneers in innovative and transformative education. So we always clamor for innovation. And what else? Transformative education. And if you will open our textbooks, you would surely see what we believe in. Okay. The themes of transformative education, like gender um, equality, like um, justice and peace, etc., they are all in the textbooks. Because we believe in this. What else? We are committed to our tradition of publishing excellence. And I would like to highlight here tradition of publishing excellence to guide teachers and students in achieving their goals for a transformed society. I would like to highlight this. Tradition of publishing excellence. And because of that, we are committed to excellence. And this should be seen, this commitment should be seen in the quality of our textbooks. 
Now, we have here some best practices. I told you earlier, I will be talking from the perspective of an, of an author or a coordinator. I am the one, for example, looking for my authors and, well, they should be written by experts and practitioners. I have been in the academe for the last 30 years and I know that there are teachers who are very, very good in the classroom. But when you ask them to write, they cannot write. So it should be a combination of a writer and an excellent teacher. Well, it is a challenge, but it is not impossible. It can happen. Kailangan lang medyo matyaga kang maghanap at kilalanin mo kung sino ang pwede. What else? Contents, activities, and assessments are aligned with the competencies and standards. I will not uh, dwell so much on this. This was already expounded by Ms. Danda and uh, Attorney Bautista. Well, this is very, very important. It is, should be updated and incorporates the 21st century skills. You know what? We do not only write, or we, students will not only use our book for the next periodic exams. We should prepare them for life. And if that is the case, then we should hone with them the 12th, 21st century skills. And these are clustered into three. The learning skills or the forces, Literacy skills or the IMT and the life skills or the flips. It's very essential. So what are the forces? Critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication. What about IMT? We have here information, media, and technology. And of course, the life skills are the flips. Flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity, and social skills. Believe me. This should be incorporated because we are preparing the students for the real world. And if ever, uh, if from the point of view of a teacher, I would be very happy if my students would, you know, develop this using the textbooks. But more than this, even in the 21st century, there should be something else that we should develop among our Filipino kids. By using the textbook, it is the, the V. And can you guess what the V is? V, yes, that is Filipino values and traits. Values integration will never go out of style, regardless of generation, even in the 21st century. So we in Phoenix Publishing, we believe so much in integrating that. If you will look back at our vision and mission, that is very much highlighted, okay? We don't want to, what, produce or develop kids with very, very big head, but very tiny limbs and very tiny hearts. So, we put so much emphasis on that. What else? What do we do? Vocabularies, assessments, activities are appropriate for the intended audience. I will not again dwell on that. That has been explained by the two previous speakers. Facts and figures are well researched, validated, check and rechecked. And with this, I would like to credit our vigilant editors. They've been working so hard to help us authors do this. Okay? So, there are so many layers, talaga, several layers of validating, researching, checking, and rechecking. What else? To further our needs are textbooks. We have incorporated the following innovations. The public clamor for innovations because that is part of our vision and mission. And maybe this is up this is this time is an appropriate one to show you the innovations that we have been doing for our textbooks. Well, we have the first, it's called the ICT activities. We have the QR codes, teachers' resource CD, summative assessment, and the teachers' wraparound edition. Let's start with the first one. When the students will see this, when the students will see this logo, the ICT, they know exactly that they should need the IMT. Remember the IMT of the 21st century, right? The information, media, and technology. Basta nakita na nila yun, alam na nila kung ano gagawin nila. And this is our response for the development of the IMT. 
It should not, it, you know, it will not just happen. Eh? You have the best intentions in mind, but if you do not really practice it, it will not just happen. You really have to provide opportunities for it to happen. What else? Now let's go to the QR codes. You have seen this several times, right? It has been used in the business, it has been used in the industry. If you want to transfer money in the VPI, you have to have the QR code. And we found a good use of the QR code in Phoenix. Because additional information, exercises, videos, and other technology to enrich the content will be shown when the students or teachers scan the QR code. So can you please click this? I cannot click it. Yeah. So if you scan it, Something like that will pop out. Sometimes it is information like that. Sometimes it is something else. Videos, music, etc., etc. So there are hidden things in the QR codes. And the kids love discovering what is hidden in the QR codes. Okay? Next. We have the teacher's resource CD. Will you please click there you go. And you know why this is so important? Because connectivity is an issue in many places in the Philippines. And we want them to what? Have the IMT. How can we do that? We have the CDs for all our series. And that is for the use of the teachers. I have been to so many schools giving trainings for you know, um, mga promo seminars or CPD seminars. And I noticed that teachers are getting younger and younger. Kaya they need all the support that they could get to be able to teach the content properly. And this is one beautiful thing. It contains many important materials, such as what? PowerPoint presentations, etc., etc. Name it, nandyan. So for example, we talk about huni ng ibon, or huni ng tito, or huni ng kalabaw. What better way to show that? Kasi you cannot bring them naman the kalabaw in the classroom. So what better way to do that than to show what is in there? Okay? So we have invested in that CD. And the teachers, you know, when I go to the schools, I would see them really hugging. The, hindi na nga usong CD ngayon eh. But for them, that is a very, very important resource. Okay? And then... Please click now. We have summative assessments. You know, in the summative assessment, ang dami kasi nating formative assessments sa textbook. But, ang nakakaligtaan minsan is a good summative assessment. And the summative assessment must also be standards-based. Okay? It is found at the end of every unit, teachers who are creative, you know, they could detach that. May perforated kasi yan part. They could detach that and keep it so that at the end of the quarter, hindi na sila masyadong gumagawa ng maraming trabaho. Yun na mismo ang pwedeng ibigay. But there are also teachers who would let it stay in the textbook and use that as part of the reviewer, which is also a good thing. Bahala sila. But what is important is we provided them with the necessary tool and that is the summative assessment. It will take time for a young teacher to learn how to come up with a beautiful summative assessment. So we are doing our best as authors, as veteran educators, to help them. What else? Wow, the last one. I would like to point out to you our star, the Teacher's Wraparound Edition. This is copyrighted and, you know, the very beautiful innovation of Phoenix Publishing. You know why? From the perspective of a teacher, tingnan nyo ha, the textbook is right in the middle and around it are what? Strategies, what else? Um, assessments, questions, etc. to make the teachers realize how the part of the textbook should be taught. So even if the teacher is not a major, which is always the case, I know, they will be able to teach the content. Kasi minsan yun ang frustration ko eh. When I write, you know, I could already envision what is going to happen in the classroom. Kitang-kita na ng isip at ng mata ko. na frustrate ako kapag hindi yun ang nangyayari. Kaya, ang pinakamaganda, sabihin ko sa kanila kung paano nila dapat ituro. Pag sinunod nila, mabuti. Pag hindi nila sinunod, okay pa rin. Ang mahalaga, nandyan siya. Okay? Because 
Sabi ko nga sa inyo, they get younger and younger and less experience. And the reason also why, in the industry, you only have six months probationary period. Tama ba? In schools, do you know how many years? Three years. Yes, it will take three years for a young teacher to get that expertise. Ano ang mangyayari sa mga bata kapag nag-antay tayo ng tatlong taon bago gumaling yung teacher? And therefore, this is very important for us. It is not easy, but it is not also impossible. So what is in the Teachers Wrap Around Edition? Look, at a glance, kita ka agad anong mangyayari. There is the part that says, at a glance. Then there is the stage one, there is the stage two, there is the stage three, and the curriculum map. And the TWE may contain other components depending on the subject area. Solution set, laboratory manual, other supplemental components, and many more. And you should see how the teachers would hog that. Okay? Mahal na mahal nila yan. Kasi alam nila na nakakatulong ito ng malaki sa kanila. So, you know what? The other topic is contemporizing, right? Contemporizing, bringing to the students closer the content of the textbooks. I super agree with that. We as authors should be able to bring it closer. We shouldn't write above their heads. We should make the lessons come alive. I'm a very, very passionate teacher. Nafo-frustrate ako kapag nakikita ko yung mga teachers ko hindi nakapagturo ng maayos. Sabi ko sa kanila, mapapatawad ko kayo kapag nangopya lang kayo sa trabaho ko. Pero hindi ko kayo mapapatawad kung nangongopya na nga kayo, hindi pa kayo nakapagturo ng maayos. And because of that, we could provide everything they need for as long as they could teach. Now, let's try it. Huh? I want to show you how we do it and what is the effect if we will try to contemporize the textbooks. There is a lesson in Pluma, grade 7, about Katutubong Awit. I want the students to realize that there is more to music than the music of Beyonce. There is more to music than the, the, the a, ano ito, yung mga uso-uso ngayon na OPM, like Mundo, Buwan, Tala, at kung ano-ano pa. Paano, <laughs> paano nila marirealize yun kung hindi tayo magbibigay ng oportunidad? And by the way, this is also my chance to give some tokens for all of you. Yes, we brought some tokens, but you have to participate. Okay po ba yun? Yeah, because I believe that, you know, if you will only, uh, my guiding principle whenever I teach, when I give a, a seminar is this, I hear and I forget. Paglabas nyo ng pintuan na yun, nakalimutan nyo lahat ng narinig nyo rito. I see and I may remember, I do and I understand. I know I still have a few more minutes, right? Tama? Com com computed ko yan. So, <laughs> bilang ko. Kaya, pakibigay sa kanila yung materials. You will work with the people closest to you. I will just show you also, illustrate to you how the 21st century skills are coming alive in the classroom through the activities that we prepare in our very own text books. Pasensya na kayo, teacher ako ngayon, okay? And you will be my students. And you will be receiving prizes. We don't give prizes in the classroom. Dito lang, katuwaan lang. Marami kaming mga regalo sa inyo, like mga kisses, chocolates, at kung ano-ano pa. Sige. So get one and pass, please. Now, natandaan nyo ba kung ano yung aralin? Tungkol saan nga ulit? Katutubong? Awit. Yes. So now, let's Use a strategy called Name the Tune. Okay? Paparinig ko sa inyo yung music and you will have to discuss with your seatmates. Ano yun? At kapag nahulaan nyo, may premyo kayo agad. Okay ba tayo doon? Yes. Very good. So, this is the first song. Listen to it very well as I play it. And Right, the correct answer. Come on, pakibigyan po sila ng illustration board. But don't put up your, don't put up your whiteboards immediately. You have to wait for my signal, okay? Because that will give you the chance to collaborate. Okay, ready? This is now the first song. Name that tune. Ready na kayo? Yes, usap ha, usap. Wag gagad magtataas. Ito na po siya. Okay, what is the song? 
Write up, wait, wait, write up, collaborate, collaborate, write it down, write it down, write it down. Okay. Do you want me to play it again? One more time. <laughs> Oops. Okay, write it down. Show me your answers. Show me your answers. Okay, now let's see if you are correct. Yeah, okay. Lisa, give your chocolates to all those who got it correctly. Yes. Uh-huh, there you go. Chocolates for all those who got it correctly. Hati hati kayo, ha? Next. This is another song. Name that tune. Oops, are you ready for the next? Ah, ayan yan, sige dali. Ato na. Naminilipit na yung mga millennials. I could see them squirming in their seats. Ah, sige, let's try it once more. Okay. Write your answers. Write your answers, everyone. Let me see. Let me see your answers. Wow, very good. Tingnan natin ha. This is the song. Okay, may mga pananalo dito, Liza. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, next song, next song. Okay, get ready, get ready. This is the next song. Okay, one more time, one more time. Okay. Uh, collaborate, collaborate, communicate. Are you ready now? Let me see your answers. Wow, tingnan natin ah. Okay, may chocolates tayo, kisses. Wala. Nasa box yung kisses. Marami tayong kisses. Okay. Next. Everyone, pay attention to the next. Ito na yung uli. Tingnan ko nga. Kasi time ko na yata. Ready. Okay, I'll give you a clue. It's a Visayan folk song. It's a Visayan folk song. Get ready. Ah, ayan, nakikita ka ng chocolate. Teka lang, Vika, later. Gusto ko mahulaan mo na nila to. Again, again. Okay. It's a Visayan folk song. Very popular in the Visayas. I'm sorry to disappoint. It's not what I want. Show me your answers. Ito, tiyak na ito. May chocolate agad. Big. Ito siya. Si Pili mo, si Pili mo. Namin with sa karagatan. Nakakuha, nakakuha. Nang isdang tambasakan. Okay, yeah, there you go. 
Okay. So now you understood what I meant when I say contemporizing, right? Bringing it very close to them. Kasi dapat paglabas nila ng classroom, ang LSS nila, tarong-tarong bukid, di ba? Kaya nila maririnig to. Hindi nila ito pakikinggan on their own. But in the classroom, it should happen. At kailan naman ito maisip ng teacher? Kailangan sa textbooks pa lang nandoon na. Okay? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for that very lively um, uh, discussion of a very of a seemingly serious topic. No, so we'd like to open the floor for questions, um, clarifications, or issues, or um, things that you might want to uh, discuss. We'd like to request the speakers to uh, come here and sit in front. So we have we still have five minutes, so we can entertain a question or two. No. Um, if you have a question, please um, come forward and then um, state your name and the institution that you are affiliated with. Yes, we have a young gentleman um, back there, so perhaps you can come forward. Hello. Uh, I'm Mr. Mark Christopher Sinilio from the Division of Pasig. I am a senior high school teacher. Uh, I'm assigned to teach uh, science and uh, at times I've been, uh, I've been assigned to teach literature. That's why I attended here. Uh, uh, I'd just like to raise a point, especially, especially in the, some of the publishing houses. Uh, we, uh, we, we were using uh, uh, the literature book from Rex but we were having a hard time, uh, especially this is one of the issues of public school teachers. We were having a hard time because after the procurement of the government of a particular uh, a book from a particular publishing house, is that the, the teacher's manual on how, on how we're going to use the book, uh, on how we will be guided on how to, we're going to use the book, is only for a limited copy, like for, uh, for every for every 500 of the copy that was procured, there is only one copy of the manual, and th this doesn't happen in all division, uh, div uh, in all div uh, in all the city divisions of NCR. So, uh, and we're only allowed, as I have learned yesterday, we're only allowed for at least educational purposes to photocopy or get a copy of at least 20 percent in order for us to be free from infringement of a certain thing how can we uh, how can we s say relax the the uh, relax the um, the control of uh, the possible or uh, how can we relax the availability of the manuals so that all of the teachers who are who are wanting to teach uh, the text with using the textbook of a particular publishing house would be able to be uh, would be guided by uh, uh, by the teacher's guide avail availability. So, thank you. I I feel you because of course as a teacher you have you want to have at least a copy of all your TRMs, but of course noted on that maybe that's something. But of course it's a it's a it's a collaboration between them and then the publisher as to how many can be released. Maybe there are things that you know the department also, and even in schools, they just want to limit as well because they also want, they also want the teachers to be able to somehow um, exercise their ability to actually teach the subject without high dependence on the book. I, but of course, I, we recognize the fact that we hope that there should be a one-to-one -one ratio of person and TRM, a teacher's manual. And noted on that, sir, we are going to take note of that. But of course, there must be a reason behind that. That's why the number of work texts or textbook is not a proportionate to the number of TRMs. And that could probably something that, of course, the publishers would be addressing 
in ensuring that we still provide access to all, even without the printed material, but at least you are able to use the TRM or the teacher's manual through technology enablement links. And, but definitely, our real intention is to educate and to help. It, like uh, the prescribed lessons or how how it was presented in the teacher's manual it's not necessarily the, the the actual we we are presenting the lesson especially in the 21st century lit literature for from Mariki Tara Oicho that's the one that uh, that I that I used in particular and aside from that aside from Rex uh, I also used the Vibal publishing although they are not uh, physically here right now uh, also, if I if I can recommend, uh, uh, there are certain concerns we're having quite concerns, especially sometimes there are quite a lot of highfalutin words. If if uh, if the if if the publishing houses can can consider uh, adding a, a glossary of the most highfalutin words, if not all of them, should be reflected in the glossary. If they can be. Some, if they can somehow uh, say revise the edition for the next few years after a certain uh, after a certain set of publication from what has been already published, if that if that will be allowed or if that can be considered at least from sure coming from our um, point of view. Thank yes, you. you're definitely noted on those things. Uh, we will uh, we will include a glossary or a dictionary, but of course. In our college books and in our other higher ed, we have those features. But in the senior high school, of course, it's ex it is expected that, I mean, there are a lot of resources where you can get the meaning of it. And at the same time, um, again, maybe, I mean, are there rational really? Sometimes I, I recognize that some teachers might have challenges in teaching the subject. Because I am sometimes a marketing subject or some of the senior high school subjects, they are assigned to teach it when in reality they are basic ed teachers. And we do recognize that that feature has to be added so that in the light of um, assignments um, assigned to teachers who are, um, who are not really college teachers and are assigned to teach it would be as well supported and um, provided with lots of help. Also, last point, uh, sorry, I, I, I may have consumed the last five minutes of the... Uh, also, <laughs> one of the points that we are also uh, want to raise is that uh, there is sometimes not non-congruence of the of the textbooks to the actual way that the, pre, the that DepEd wants the topic to be uh, to be in sequence of. Sometimes that is like the beginning part of the of, of the curriculum guide can be found at the middle of the at the middle of the book, yeah. uh, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, different publishers have different styles. Um, each of us have our different designs, but then um, if we have the DepEd prescribe a curriculum guide wherein all of the topics there, the key competencies, the learning competencies should be there, but it would depend upon the authors, uh, the writers, and the publisher how it will be, uh, how it will be presented. I say each and every publishers nga have their own house format. So, but then, but then again, um, us we are focusing Danda and I, and I guess ma'am then as well as in the editorial department, we see to it that um, all of the all of the topics, all of the things, all of the competencies that should be in the um, in the curriculum guide should be inserted in the book, and we must go beyond that. Yun sabi ko nga kanina, I'll be answering you with a glossary. Um, yun, pwede naman yang wala, pwede nga meron. Pero kung gusto mong maganda, lahat kami, pe-prescribe ng iba-ibang libro eh. Um, nasa sa design na yan ng publisher kung ilalagay niya o hindi. Um, kung hindi niya nilagay, uh, that entails only uh, for the teacher 
to be um oh, to be resourceful um yun nga eh, diba, sa differenti differentiated instruction um there is a prescription of the exercises and activities but you as a teacher you should be able to go beyond that your research so kami rin, when we do our books uh, when we develop our textbooks um, we we do not just rely on the curriculum guide. We do our series of research. Kaya nga kami mismo yung humahanap ng writers uh, doon sa magsusulat. And it should be not only isang teacher lang ang magsusulat. Dapat team sila. No? Lalo na ngayon sa high school spiral progression. So, did we answer your question? Ah, sige. Kasi, I know that DepEd schools would want an in toto sunod sa DepEd curriculum. But of course, when we make textbooks, most especially for private and both public, alam naman natin decentralized the private schools. At kahit kapano, may kanya-kanya kaming instructional design, may instructional design ng Phoenix, may instructional design ang Rex, may instructional design sila. Yung interpretasyon namin on what we feel is the best way to use this are the things that we employ. Kumbaga, um, tama siya, hindi siya sin for private schools if hindi yung unang competency dito, eh, nasa pang-apat na competency doon sa private. Pero sa public schools, I would like to believe, dapat yung one dito, one din sa book dito, ha, two dito, dapat two sa book. Meron kasing ibang science and art na ginagawa ang mga publishers. How come some lessons are not at the beginning when in the K-12 curriculum, it's the first topic at hand? Minsan, pagbukas mo ng libro, June, turn to page 65 for your first homework. Kasi doon gusto nung author at ng publisher nakalagay. So parang ganun po yung... Um, rational behind things. Kaya minsan, titingnan ng mga ibang um, end users, di naman sila align. Nandun sa dulo na yung una ulit. Parang ganon. Pero, hindi yun sinasadya. Ganun, ah, sinadya talaga yon for some intent na kakaiba. Yun lang po. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask, uh, uh, time is up. Last question. Okay, I, I'm supposed to ask a question, pero dahil moderator lang ako, bibigay ko na lang yung opportunity sa isang magtatanong. Um, yes. Yes, I would just like to ask, uh, do you, uh, in your process, when you develop a, when you create a textbook, do you submit them for review afterwards? And I'd also like to know if there's a governing body that reviews textbooks before they are released to the market. In other words, you're talking about their uh, the, procedure. Their publishing houses and mm -hmm. also the Philippines' policy on this because I've come mm -hmm. across... Uh, I'm not from the textbook industry. I'm from the UP Press, so we don't do textbooks. But as a mother and tita Ninang, I've come across question uh, textbooks with questionable content. So I'd like to know if, uh, if there is a governing body that uh, checks and approves these textbooks before they are marketed and sold to schools. Sa Phoenix po. Okay. Sa Phoenix, uh, meron kami tinatawag na content editors. And these are experts. No, They go through the content and then they come up with um, suggestions or kung may content errors, ganun nakikita nila. So, yun, yun ang aming uh, procedure. Kami then we try our very best to update our social context. Kasi sometimes, I mean, nag-iibang panahon, nag-iibang mga paniniwala, mga salitang sa ibang lugar ay hindi magandang pakinggan. Para dito ay normal lang siya. So basically, we try our very best to update ourselves on those social context, yung mga cultural stuff. Kasi iba-iba kailangan namin ayusin structurally yun or else baka may nasasagan sa ang ka na pala from region 1 eh, hindi, eh positibo naman pala siya sa NCR so yung mga ganon kaya admittedly it's a challenge kailangan update ka ng update kasi minsan talagang ano eh pag, ang bilis ng pagbabago parang OS parang education bilis kaya kailangan mabilis at iba at, at, at subjective para sa iba okay para sa iba mali 
Well, there was a time before may tumawag sa amin, may error daw. Pero nung tinanong ko, saan po yung error? Eh kasi yung letter E mo, ang taas ng ganon. Sabi, ah, okay. Sige po, noted po. Pero tumaas lang, na-extend lang. <laughs> error na para sa kanya yon Kasi penmanship expert siya. Can I still answer? Um, ours in our publications, uh, our publication house, we have our own content development guidelines wherein uh, we are not just only, um, hindi lang namin tinitignan yung uh, credibility ng teachers, uh, sorry, ng writers, ng authors, but as well as may pinafollow na guidelines doon. And maraming layer siya. Kaya pati plagiarism check, Um, meron kaming layer na gano'n. Kasi mahirap ma-demanda. But me, uh, minsan, kadalasan, um, careless ang mga writers sa ganyan. So, sabi ko sa kanila, ang writer ay, the writer is only one person para sirain niya yung buong name ng company. So, you should be able, as publishers, we should be able to take care of our name. Kasi sila, isang, isang name lang, Uh, pwede, alam mo naman dito sa Pilipinas, isang dot lang, uh, pwede ka nang mapulaan. Ano? Isa lang ang nagkamali, lahat na yung damay na. Pero yun, that's the thing. We have content development guidelines and we ensure that the, uh, the quality and credibility of our writers. Kasi nga, we are uh, protecting the name of the company itself. Maraming maraming salamat. This has been a very, um, yeah, a very lively discussion. Uh, sorry, wala na po tayong oras. Um, maraming salamat sa mga speakers. Uh, palakpakan po natin sila. And then of course, uh, you audience for being such a wonderful uh, audience. So, um, yeah, we'll have the session 14 immediately and this has something to do with developing supplemental learning materials. Maraming maraming salamat po. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Danda Kermelda Buhain, Dr. Maria Virginia Bautista, Ms. Alma Dayag, and Mr. John Jack Wigley for sharing your best practices and challenges in contemporizing learning materials. For our next session, for the final session for our two-day summit, we will be discussing the importance of partnerships in developing supplemental learning materials. We will be joined to share...